Well, right now, the Maryland Stadium Authority is moving forward with a study to determine a location in Baltimore City that could house D.C. United's minor league soccer team. This morning, David Williams with the Taxpayer Protection Alliance is joining us live to weigh in on the economics behind the study and potential new stadium. David, we were just talking about a commercial break, doing our audio checks here, and we know that you like soccer. So you're like, hey, you know, personal reasons. Why not have some more soccer here in the U.S. and spread it around a little bit more? But what are we talking about when it comes down to paying for taxpayers and the potential site location? Tom, I love soccer. I hate taxpayer subsidies for any sport, including soccer. So let's look at this study, $450,000. Now, Baltimore City taxpayers are on the hook for $100,000. State taxpayers for about $125,000. The rest is going to be paid for by D.C. United. But here's the kicker, no pun intended. D.C. United should be paying for all of this. This is The taxpayers should not be paying for the study or a stadium. And what we're going to see is come out of this study is that, yes, let's build a stadium. And that stadium is going to cost a lot of money, mm -hmm. probably between 60 to $80 million. And uh, that's a lot of money. And we know that taxpayers are going to be on the hook for that because we've seen that before in Maryland and other places where taxpayers pay for these stadiums. And it's a huge waste of money, despite the fact that I'm a longtime soccer supporter. I've had season tickets to D.C. United since 1997. It's still a waste of money. Well, we say waste of money, but every time we have an argument, I mean, this 60 to 80 million is nothing when you compare to NFL stadiums going across and upwards of a billion dollars now, and that a lot of taxpayers are paying with the subsidy. So where is the benefit then for those who live in that area? I mean, they get more jobs, they get a lot more people coming in, a lot more tourism, all the soccer fans heading to the area. They get temporary jobs, and economists have looked at these stadium subsidies for a number of years now, and you're right, it's not a billion-dollar stadium. But then again, it's a stadium that's going to be about 7,500 or 10,000 people, so you're not going to bring in a lot of economic activity any really at all. So let's look at the two sports teams right now in Baltimore that are doing well. You have the Ravens and the O's, and they're doing well. And people are excited, not because they just received $1.2 billion from taxpayers to renovate their stadiums. They have good teams. They have good players. They're winning. That's what brings people to the stadiums and what generates this excitement. And guess what? If you're going to the stadium, you're not going to the movies. You're not going to a restaurant. So it's really just shifting money from one activity to another. And that's what this stadium is going to do. It's not going to create any sort of new economic activity for the city. And again, this has been studied for decades, and we see it time and time again. So, you, so when we start talking about the revitalizing of Baltimore, you're saying, hey, look, if, uh, if a, a team wants to do this, they should be the one footing the bill, especially for a study. It shouldn't be actually um, the city just chipping in 100000 here or citizens 200000 there. It should be all D.C. United, which pays out players millions and millions of dollars. Hey, why don't you guys just do the $450,000 study? 100%. Let's bring soccer to Baltimore City, but not at taxpayer expense. There's got to be a way for the private sector to pay for this. It should not be borne on the backs of taxpayers. David Williams with the Taxpayer Protection Alliance. We appreciate it. Thank you.